according to your card. So that means we're on. Uh, it just means I started. I just kind of wanted to test it. Tell them whenever you want me to take those now. Not sure. My phones and computers are saying 57. So let's give it just a couple minutes here for people, more people to join. Okay, so I'm going to do one quick thing here. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer. Okay. Take a peek at that. I think you're good, Jim. It's pretty good, huh? Yeah. And we're, you're ready to go whenever you are. When are you ready? Yes. You ready to kick off? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, that's just kickoff time. This is goal starting time. I guess I don't want to say goal starting. It's not all football. This isn't football. This is brain injury time. Hey, everybody, welcome to Montana Puzzle Club Online. We're kicking this here about six o'clock on January 4th. 2023. Can you believe that? We made it to 2023. Who would ever think? If you're 50 years ago, then you think it's ever going to live to be 2023? We never thought about that. There's a whole a whole nation full of people that remember when the two, two, year 2000, you thought that Armageddon is going to be here and this whole world is going to turn upside down. And, well, 23 years later, here we are. Welcome to 2023. Welcome to the Montana Puzzle Club Online. Those of you who are online, if you, I don't know if John can see you coming online there yet, but give a wave and say, hey, I'm here. And those of you who are at Facebook, just know that you still have the ability to communicate. It just has to be kind of telepathy. You have to Ask John a question, then he asked me the question. So, again, welcome to Mo Montana Puzzle Club. What is Montana Puzzle Club? Montana Puzzle Club is a support group for Montanans all around the country. We don't care whether you're from Minnesota, Montana, wherever. We would like to see a, we would like my goal was to have 100 people in Montana to get online. That's my goal for this year is to get 100 people online to watch Montana Puzzle Club. And so if we get online, what do we do? We're talking about brain injury. Where did Montana Puzzle Club come from? I'm Jim Nicholson. I'm a 31 and a half year survivor of brain injury. 31 and a half years ago, I was a full-time fireman from Missoula Rural Fire. Been on the fire out here west of town one day. Four in the morning, I head back to the fire with a tank of oil water, and boom, a train hit my fire truck. Put the lights out on me. I was there to call my son, I call my tape pass for a couple weeks. When I could breathe them all and swallow them on, they transferred me over to Missoula Community. Hospital rehab unit. And there it took them three months to teach me how to walk and talk. And they literally did, because I couldn't walk an ounce. They taught me, took me down to the gym and they set me up for, we're going to learn how to roll over. And so I had to learn how to roll over and they really do. They set me up and then they started pushing me. They knock it off. And so they were trying to. See if my reactions would work. And to this day, that's one of my challenges with migraine injuries. My reactions are a little slow. People don't quite understand that. And I'll explain it this way. I'm sitting here, John's over there 50 feet away, he's wadding up a, he's doing one, he's wadding up a snowball. And he lets loose and throws it. And it goes, I think a duck. So 
So my reaction is a little slow. So that's the primary reason I don't cry. I haven't been out now for 31 and a half years. In that way, 31 and a half years I've been depending on my wife or somebody else to transport me to get me from here to there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all those, all those drivers and people who have driven me around the country doing things for years. When I drive back was my full winner. I found the on my street with a full winner and, and I, we downsized a few years ago, so I don't have riding on more anymore. But I got snowblower and all the stuff that I want behind it. I do pretty good. But the only drive streets. The city of Missoula doesn't do a very good job of following our streets, so I try to plow what I can. Right now, I think right now, because I didn't get out and plow the snow off and they packed down the ruts, I think Missoula, our street is the roughest street in Missoula. It's got potholes in the snow that are six inches deep and and I can't touch it with my snow ball now. <clears throat> it, I, I was a survivor in the, in the rehab for three months to teach me how to walk and talk. I still go to physical therapy. Been doing that now for 31 years. And I'm starting again with some speech therapy next week. So if you don't understand me, let John know, let me know. Hey, Jim needs to speak a little clearer. I like this Montana Puzzle Club because it gives me a chance to practice my speech skills. My speech service wants me to work on enunciating words properly and correctly. So this gives me a chance to do that. And if you don't hear me or don't understand me, let me let John know. Don't tell me, but tell John, he's, he's my he's my big guide today. Some days we have John and Sarah. Today we just have John. So I I got out of rehab and then several years later they the I'd gone to a couple of support group meetings in Missoula here and didn't really care for it. And then then I volunteered for the brain injury office. And the support group leader decided to, to change occupations. So she dropped the support group. So Missoula didn't have a support group for a year or so. I don't know how long it was. And I said, hey, I'll try and step in and do that. So I started working with the support Missoula for injury support group. And we met for once a month for several years. And, we build it up there, it's just a thriving group. We were getting about 30 to 40 people a month to our meetings. It was awesome. And then I had a couple of people in the meeting said, hey, we don't like to go to the monthly support group meeting because, because they, we tend to get pulled down. Well, with the monthly support group meeting, we had three people that were wheelchair bound and two people that didn't talk. And so you had a different sort of meeting that had to, you had to cater part of your meeting to the people that understood it well, and the other part of the people that were having trouble staying up with it. So you, they, certain amount of people said, well, it tends to pull me down. So they asked me to start another group. So I started a group, it was a higher functioning support group people. So we just met and had coffee and then it evolved and my wife came up with the name of Puzzle Club. I said, well, your life is like a big puzzle. When that train hit your fire truck, it spread your life all along the tracks. And now it's your job to go back and find the pieces and put it back together. Well, I have, I have identified a whole bunch of pieces like driving like speech, like balance, like walking, running, you know, all the different things. There's thousands of pieces to every one of our lives. And so she said, your life is like a big puzzle. Now it's your job to find the pieces and put it back together. So now when I find those pieces, I say, 
Well, what do I do about driving? Well, that's a puzzle piece about driving. Some of you don't drive first. I, I'm one of those people who don't drive, but that's an example, one piece of the puzzle. So how do you get from point A to point B without driving? You got to get somebody else to drive you <clears throat> or walk or bicycle. Depends on the situation. But nonetheless, that's a puzzle piece that we found out. Found us. I had to learn how to put this, make do, put it together to make my life work. Get my life back together. So this puzzle doesn't have all the pieces quite in place, but it works. So there's a little bit of story about how Puzzle Club got started. And then we've run Puzzle Club now. We just finished, we're just starting into our 23rd year of Puzzle Club. We've been meeting once a week for 23 years. Wow, that's a lot of Saturdays. We, we chose, we took votes on when to meet and tried different options. So we've gone from eight o'clock to, to 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And now we've seen that settle at Saturday morning, nine o'clock. We meet every Saturday and we're back now to a Black Cat Bake Shop on West Broadway here in Missoula. So we meet every Saturday with the exception of the last two weeks we took off because Saturday before last was Christmas Eve and last Saturday was New Year's Eve. So here we are. So our, our next meeting is scheduled for this Saturday. So if you're in Missoula and would like to come to Puzzle Club, just show up the Black Cat Bake Shop on 2001 Broadway at nine o'clock and come to the back room and we'll be there. So those of you who are all around the state and those of you who are on Facebook who may even be, who knows where you're at, in Colorado or Arizona or wherever you're at, speak up. If you have questions, ask and John will relay a question to me. Our topic tonight was on 2022 and 2023. So what happened in 2022 and, and what's gonna happen in 2023? This time of year, everybody gets their pen and paper out and they write down a set of resolutions. Does everybody have that? Do you have them all down? Well, I've, I asked that question to lots of people and some do and some don't. If you don't have a resolution, what happens? Life, life just happens. You just go on day by day and things don't happen. Things happen here and there randomly. If you do have them write down, what, is, what does that do to you? If you've got a, a set of goals and you can focus on it, that gives you a distinctive direction you're heading for this year. So last year we had John at the Brendan Drops here, and I'm sure he did the same thing last year at this time of year. He says, what's important? So what are some notables, notables that the Brain Injury Alliance did last year? I got a little, I asked him for a little list. One of the big things they did was Helma gives a giveaway. They want to educate people. Two things on educate people where the Brain Injury Alliance is what they do here. And number two is prevent brain injuries. Helmets are just amazing. Uh, 20 years ago, the before they got helmets going, the, the odds of having a brain injury if you had a bicycle wreck was about 85% that you was gonna get a brain injury if you crashed your bike. So they start pushing helmets and now with the helmets are the real common uses to helmets. It's yeah. just the opposite. About 15% of the people that get brain injuries are because they didn't have a helmet on. Now there's 85% that have helmets that they avoid a brain injury. Yes, they're gonna get hurt. Sometimes they get brain injuries with the helmet. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> So helmet giveaway was one of the big, big things that big, the Brain Injury Alliance did with 
last year. They gave helmets away in Billings and Missoula and Great Falls, the large events. And just about anybody that wants a helmet, if they need a helmet, call the Brain Injury Line. Say, hey, how do I get a helmet? The other big thing that Big Sky did last year that the Brain Injury Line did was, was the Big Sky Challenge. And they're expanding Big Sky Challenge. It's going on, I believe it's fourth year in Missoula. This year will be the fourth year. And But last year, they started a new adventure up in Kalispell. So this is their, their first Big Sky Challenge in Kalispell. And I think they, they weren't able to do Bozeman the year before they did Bozeman. But again, that gives people a chance to reach out and touch others and find out that they're not alone with this brain injury. Another item that they did last year in Brain Injury Alliance is they kicked off the Montana Stroke Survivor Connection Program. So they've added that in. When I first got involved with the Brain Injury Association, Brain Injury here in Montana, was there was a real separation between strokes and brain injuries. The Stroke yeah. International Stroke Association was pretty well funded. And the, the brain injury was, was struggling for funds. And so over the years, there's been a, a change that menu a little bit. The Brain Injury Alliance has turned around and accepted a brain injury as a brain injury. Now let's talk about how you got it. Some of them got them from trauma. Some of them got them from shaken baby syndrome. Some of them got them from aneurysm, tumors. And lo and behold, strokes. Now we fit strokes in there. Stroke is a brain injury of a different nature. Most strokes are hem hemiplegic, which is one side or the other, where many brain strokes are, are hit both sides of the brain. Uh, Strokes, especially brain stem strokes, can affect both sides of the brain. Another thing that the Brain Injury, Montana Brain Injury Alliance has kicked off is a, a, they want trainers. They want people that are trained in brain injury. So they've kicked off a certified brain injury survivors training program. If you don't, haven't heard of it before, get hold of the Brain Injury Alliance here and get signed up. You can become a certified brain injury uh, specialist. specialist. That's a weird one. And special, you can be a specialist. Hey, everybody wants to be a specialist. So you can do that by calling in here and they have a training program that's, that's awesome to it, that, that works great. So those are some of the notables that, that Brain Injury Alliance did in 2022. And so we come up, I said, hey, what about 2023? So some of them, the goals that the Brain Injury Alliance has is they want to extend the same programs they had last year. They want to continue the helmet giveaway. They're going to continue the Big Sky Challenge program, and that'll give a it makes a brain injury awareness a big thing in Montana. They want to have a an annual, uh, at least have an annual conference. We haven't had a brain injury annual brain injury conference for five years now. So the last one was in Bozeman, and and I look forward to it every year. That was our biggest need for fundraising. In our monthly brain injury group was to get funds to get to the state conference. At that time, it cost about, uh, let's see, it was about $250 per person to get them to the conference, get them registered, pay for transportation, meals, and all the stuff. So that was our biggest thing. Our brain injury, our support group in Missoula, that was, the big goal of doing fundraising to get enough funding to get to the conference. Just a heads up, this year's will be in Missoula. This year's conference will be in Missoula. So they're working out details. Look forward to that details. It'll be coming up our next meeting, which may even 
No more. We'll tell you more. The next big thing that they have on their, their goals for this year is legislative work. They're trying to get set up to get more funding for brain injury helpline. That's a, we're hoping that we get Congress to get accepting the idea that we need help. The brain injury helpline is available to anybody and all you have to do is call 1-800-241-6442. And ask for help. And the Brain Injury Helpline will help you. The Brain Injury Lines here is, we, uh, several years ago, they had a state legislature passing that was well funded program. And then with all the budget cuts, it got, it, that got cut out. So they need help getting the legislature back on board with funding the Brain Injury Helpline. They're also trying to get the member, if you remember a few years ago, we had a, a Dunn-Stavish brain injury. Uh, so that if the kids got hurt in high school or sports football, that they were pulled off of, out of the game, that they couldn't return to the game without getting a doctor to release them. It's important to have, if you get in brain injury, it's important to, have time to get your brain back to square one. So you need to really cut your activity level down until you're on board again with getting back active after brain injury. So those are a couple of the important things that, that the Brain Injury Alliance is gonna have for this year. So every brain injury is a little bit different, but I challenge you to, to take a sheet of paper out and you don't even have to write down, note down some things that you accomplished last year. Now, if you're a brain injury survivor, you can be long-term like myself, or maybe you're short-term, but look at, look at your past and say, what did I accomplish? List down some of the things that you accomplished because many times, what you're going to set for goals for this year, fall right back to what you did last year. It gives you some guidelines to go by. If you had a brain injury last year, and find out now, I'm, I'm eight months down the road and I want to drive again. Well, what do, you, what do you have to do? That may be one of the goals that you put on your goals or your resolutions that you're going to do is, is drive again. So if you don't know what to do, by calling, there's a good question. Call up the brain injury. How do, how do I get certified to drive again? I can tell you the answer. It's get your doctor to write you a prescription to get a driver valve. And, and then they can, maybe before you do a driver valve, you need to get some true driver training. And look at what the options are. And then once you do the evaluation, they say, well, you're doing pretty good, but you're short on two or three areas of driving. So then it gives you a goal that you can say, hey, I'm gonna improve those, improve those steps in my life. You know, in my case, mine was reaction time. I'm not sure I know how to drive. I could probably drive better than 95% of the people on the road. But does that mean it's okay? Not if my reactions are bad. One of my conditions that I'm aware of is I, if I get up to an intersection, I did one of these, turn my head back and forth, looking at traffic two or three times, I say, whoa, wait a minute, things are getting messed up. It mess, it plays game with me. That's one of my challenges in PT that I do now is I just do walking, with turning my head back and forth or up and down. And that's, it's amazing how that identifies that you have some deficits if you do those simple things. Other things like getting up from a chair, you know, learning your balance. This time of year is very bad because you know that people over 60, the number one cause of injury of people over 60, 60 is falls. This 
it's time of year is really bad for falls with ice and snow. So if you're aware of it, what do you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is start doing some training on balance, balancing. Learn how to, uh, you know, you see the signs now, I see it outside the hospital's got a sign, sign caution that slipper out, walk like a penguin. Well, hey, maybe I gotta learn how to walk a little different. They got amazing snow cleats if you do much walking in the ice and snow. I call it, get a pair of those back bear tracks and snow cleats, and put them on your shoes <clears throat> so you can avoid falls. Falls being number one, and what, what happens with the fall? Many, many brain injuries happen with falls. It's, I don't know what it, where it ranks in them, but it's pretty high up for falls. I got my second brain injury from a fall. I was getting my garage finished, and they, they were painting, I was getting ready to paint, so I moved one of the cabinets out on the back sidewalk and went to cover it up with a little piece of bisqueen. And the wind puffed the bisqueen back, and I stepped off my little, I was only one step up on my step ladder. But I stepped back and lost my balance, lit on my bed button, slammed my head on the sidewalk. And I'm not sure if I was, I'm not sure, I don't know that I was knocked out, but I got up kind of dazed and I went in and told my wife that I fell. And she said, well, did you get knocked out? I said, I don't know, I'm here. <laughs> so I didn't know. So we went in the air room and they did the CAT scan and stuff. And found out, yes, I got another concussion. Not as bad as the first one, but another concussion. It took me about six months of rehab uh, to get my balance and speech back pretty well corrected. I just have a little bit of trouble with speech now. So if anybody out there says, if you've been understanding, having trouble understanding me, I haven't seen any hands raised. John hasn't said, hey, somebody's got a question for you. So be sure and ask a question if you have some. So where did we go? We've been talking about Puzzle Club meeting for 23 years. And just know that there's your option. You know, I started Puzzle Club where a gal that drove up here from Bozeman years ago and she rode the bus up to Bozeman, come to Puzzle Club and then turn around and get in the bus and go back to Bozeman. She did that two or three times, and so I went down to Bolton, helped her get a puzzle club started there. It went for several, at least several months. I'm not sure how long it went, but it takes a lot of tenacity to keep a puzzle club going. It takes somebody in that group to say, okay, we're going to meet once a week. It doesn't matter. If we only get two of it, it doesn't matter. So. I challenge you, if you're, you don't have to have a puzzle club, but you can have a friend. If you want, just go and have coffee and chit and chit and chit, chit chat about your brain injury. And if you got more questions, you can ask. I'm, I'm always available to help people get a puzzle club going in their area. Or not, if nothing else, you can start with making sure that you get online here on every other two, Wednesday night at six o'clock and watch Montana Puzzle Club online. If you've got questions, we're here to give you answers. If I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll find it for you. I'll get it for you. That's what I tell people all the time. If I don't know it, I'll give it. I'll find it for you. There's lots of answers online. I put together a list of about 50, 60 topics we use for Puzzle Club. And usually a topic lasts us about two or three weeks at Puzzle Club. So uh, six of them gives us a couple years worth of supply of topics. So where do we go from there? Resolution for 2023. Now, in 2020, what were some things I was, I was glad to see that we, we had blue enough stick to it and tenacity to keep Puzzle Cup going. We had a 
pick a last year, I think it was last year, the year before we took about two months off for this COVID garbage to come along and we took a couple months off and then we started meeting. They said, well, you can't meet together. Well, we said, who, who, fully, we're going to meet together. So we've been doing it ever since. There's been lots of challenges up and down with that, whether you should be meeting, but we've met together. We've had uh, had COVID hit a couple of our, our people in in a public club. We don't know if it's from public club or not, but it's uh, it. I I won't even get in there because I have a, some set opinions about this COVID stuff. It's sad to me to see that the vaccines have been given to many prime athletes fatalities. We're not going to go there, though. Uh, anyway, what are we going to do in 2023? My challenge with Puzzle Club is one of my goals is I want to look and find somebody that can fill in for me when I'm out of town because in the summertime, I like to take my RP and my wife like to take and go on little trips uh, at least once a month during the summertime or more often. So I try to find people that can fill in, fill my shoes. So that's one of the challenges is in any time you're in leadership position is find somebody to fill in for you when you're gone. Ideally, a, a leadership, one of the prime things of a good group leader is to find somebody to replace him when he, when he leaves and, and moves to another town or whatever. We've had support group leaders who've done that, and boy, that leaves a hole to be filled. Ian Elliott and Bozeman and Billings did a wonderful job running the Billings support group for a number of years, and he passed away last year and it left a big vacancy. I think they're getting back on speed pretty good now, but it's a challenge. The same thing with Bozeman. Mary, if it wasn't for Mary to partners, hanging in there and pushing the Bozeman group to go. It just, it always takes those people who take somebody that's with a lot of stick to itiveness to hang in there and keep it going. All right. If you're around Montana, the problem we have is a distance between towns. If you lived in Lincoln, you don't have any support groups close by. You know, the, the closest one to Lincoln would be the Missoula or Helena and, or Great Falls, you know. And Great Falls, Mike and Shirley and Sullivan have I kept, the, I kept the support group in there for going for years and years. Does it answer all the questions you have? Maybe not. But the challenge is if you aren't happy with everything the way it goes, get involved. Get involved, get, do some research. Every one of us has the same challenge. If you, have, if you have some computer skills, you can go to work on your computer. If you don't, you can go to libraries. All the libraries now have computers with computer training to help get going. The, the, the internet has a tremendous amount of information out there on brain injury. Every time I do a, a puzzle cup topic, I get down and do some research and see if my ideas are somewhat current with what's going on around the world. We have some new innovative things. There are new things coming out all the time about, about brain injury. And for several years now, we've had the major thing that the brain is able to reproduce and make new brain cells. When my accident come along, the, it was just a strong no way. You have what you have, what you were born with for brain cells. Now they claim that the brain can regenerate and make new brain cells. And that, part of that game is you telling yourself to do it. You telling yourself, you know, this time of year, they say one of the best things brain people can do is, is join a support group 
pick up a musical instrument and try to learn how to play a new musical instrument. Reading books, doing things that keep your brain active. I have a couple of books at home that, that I just love to read and that keep your brain alive. There's one big, uh, Dr. Dr. Amons is, has a book, uh, Keep Your Brain Alive. I can't remember the name of the other author. <clears throat> so uh, it's pretty quiet out there tonight. I wonder how many people we have online tonight and how many people on Facebook. Have you got any questions? We've got a lot of the people that you mentioned with the different brain injury support groups. In fact, our the friends in Kalispell said, hey, how come you didn't mention us? And I'm oh, explaining that. Hey, you were, Don, I'm sorry, I didn't mention Don. <laughs> and I know, but and I was going to explain that you were talking about tenacity and how difficult it can be to yeah. maintain a long-term support group. And in the grand scheme of things, Coffee with Survivors, they're kind of a young group compared to some of these other groups right now. Yes. Right. But welcome aboard and welcome to the challenge. You, if, if you're a new support group leader, hang in there. Just know that there's there's hope. There's and always ask if there's somebody that's got ideas of a good idea for your support group. What's the best thing you want? To, what's the best thing you want to do with your group? Well, that was one of the things, and and I didn't get asked that question when I first was injured. I went to the support group and they said, well, this, this, and that. And it didn't interest me, so I, I left, I quit. But if somebody said, what do you want in a support group? That would have said, okay, this is what I want. So maybe make a list. If you are, are a member of a support group, make up a list of some of the things that you want to see there. Do you want to have more social? Do you want to have a... Uh, now, fundraiser, what do you what do you want from a support group? Do you want to know just about how to cure certain parts of your brain injury? How do you how do you get more help than is available local? What are the some of the things that's going on? There's there's almost unlimited number of areas that the brain injury can that have questions that can be answered. <clears throat> so I don't know, Don, Don up there in Kalispell's, I've heard good things about this group up there. You just threw out too that in March it'll actually be 40 years for them, which wow. that's pretty cool. At that time. <laughs> I met uh, Don the Bridges when I was in Bridges. And he came to Puzzle Club here and he decided to get one going up in Calso. He doesn't call it Puzzle Club, but he's, he's got a name for it. And Coffee with Survivors. Coffee with Survivors. And that's what it takes, you know. We had Puzzle Club here, and, and Goob West was one of the survivors come to Puzzle Club, and he was a young guy, and, and there was a whole bunch of us old guys at the Puzzle Club, and so he wanted a young, he started a group miss, called Missing Pieces. It was just for young people, college kids and high school kids that wanted to get together socialize. And and they did great, but they wanted the social, they wanted the social thing. They wanted he started going bowling. They went to bowling every week and and that worked out good, except for he couldn't afford to pay for bowling for 10 people every week. So that that kind of put an end to that because he, he said well, you're on your own and, and it didn't work. So there are different avenues that, that work out. We've we've gone with Puzzle Club in our group here. So it's a, it's been a no host. Come and enjoy. I'll just I said I've I'll just so I'll always buy coffee if you want coffee. But breakfast, you're on your own. So now we're at Black Cat Bake Shop and they got breakfast specials, or you can just be satisfied with a cup of coffee or donut or what have you. We like it. We like it because Black Cat gives us a private room where we can talk individually. We've met at about six different restaurants and stuff around Missoula. We started Montana Club and it was too noisy to so went to Paradise Falls and 
and got enough quiet enough there, but we started growing pretty quick. They had a meeting room that would only hold 20, and we had 27 people coming every week. And so they said, well, okay, 20 is limit on this room. And so they we had to quit Paradise Falls and go to Mont uh what is it? Joker's Wild. Yeah, Wild. We went to Joker's Wild. Was there about another five or six years, but they had a big enough room that we could get up to 30 of us there. But when you move, you lose about half your people and start over again. But we had a pretty good group at, at Joker's Wild. And then what did they do? After a couple of years there, they, they sold the building and they dozed the building. So we lost out again. And we had to go to, then we went down to, I think, Montana Club. So all of a sudden, Montana Club quit serving breakfast. So we had to change again. We went over to another casino and, and met at the casino for a couple of years. And what did they do? They dozed that building, sold the building. So we lost out again. So then we went over to, to a Black Cat Bake Shop. And we started, I guess, Black Cat Bake Shop or West Side Boy now, and they had a big room, but they wanted $250 for the meeting room, and we said, hey, we can't afford that. So, so they let us meet there, and we went back to Black Cat. And, and then long come COVID, and they shut us down again because the meeting room was part of uh, Noodles Express, and they, so they filled that room with chairs because they couldn't have all the people in the restaurant. So we lost out again. We went to uh, Montana Club. Yeah. Had Montana Club for, for a few months there, and then they quit serving breakfast. So we had to move again. <laughs> so we ended up going to four B's on each Broadway. Sure enough, with all this help of restaurant help, we go there Saturday morning at Puzzle Club and they got a sign, sign door, we're closed. Don't have enough help. Can't get help, so they were closed. So we moved back to Black Car, met in the coffee shop, and I, I talked to the manager at Noodles, and it happened to be that he okayed us to move back into their, their Noodle Express meeting room. So that's where we're at. Wherever you're at, you're going to run into challenges with meeting. I don't care what kind of meeting, you're going to have some challenges. And just know that they can all be overcome with a little thing called tenacity and, and positive attitude. Attitude is one of the biggest things we've got going for 2023. If you can get the right attitude, you don't care what comes along. You can say, hey, I'll survive. If I get my attitude right, I can jump up and get out of bed and meet the day with all kinds of enthusiasm. And that's the challenge that I leave with you for, for 2023 is that get in and take the challenge, right? Take some time to write down some lists. Now, all it takes is a piece of scratch paper. Pull out your yellow notebook and start writing down some, some we call it a brain, just call it brain dream. Just dream about things that you want for this year. Don't make any, don't put any lids on it. Don't put any restrictions on it. Just write down everything you want for this year. If you want a million dollars, put down a million dollars. This is your dream list. Start with the dream list. And then when you get down with the dream list, then you go down to, to say, okay, what's the, put, the, put them into some categories. One might be financial, one might be spiritual, one might be health. If you want to say, okay, I want to be able to, I want to be able to run a marathon. Boy, boy, that's a marathon, it's a big challenge. Well, start slow, you know, with our Missoula support group, we used to have every year we'd have a uh, walkathon. Out of the Big Sky High School, we had a 
we use their, their track out there on one of the evenings when they weren't using it. And we'd set up and go out there and we'd walk around the track, just walk. Some of our brain injury people could only make one lap around. Some of them had to have help getting around in one lap. I set a goal for myself. I wanted to be able to have run a, uh, run a full lap. And for me, running was really tough because I could run. But to get a whole quarter around there without stopping, without walking, was quite a challenge for me. But I, but I made it took me a little practice, but we had people that, that set out, some people, uh, I think Jess Evans set out that he wanted to do eight laps or they do eight laps, you know, do. So whatever, whatever your goal is for 2023, set down, write down your dream list and then go back and look at it and put it into some categories and say, well, the important thing to me is, is health. So what are my health goals? I want to be able to get rid of my back pain. I, so I got to go do some, P, I got to get signed up and do some PT and whatever, you know, everybody's going to have different lists. <clears throat> but if you put your list in several different categories, and then I have a, a thing that I do with goals that I call, you apply all the goals to MERST. MERST is, M R S T. That makes them number one is measurable. Every one of your goals should be measurable. If it's not measurable, how do you know if you won? You don't know. And step number two is make them realistic. If you set a goal to make a million dollars and you've only made a thousand dollars a year for the last 10 years, a million dollars is kind of unrealistic, it's not realistic. So make your goals realistic. Say, okay, I made 10,000 last year, I'm gonna make 15,000 this year. So set a realistic goal for yourself. So that's the R. And then S is specific. Make it specific. If you say, I wanna get healthy, that's not very specific. You need to say, I wanna be able to do 20 sit-ups or I want to do 10 chin-ups or whatever the physical, whatever the, the goal is, make it realistic, make it specific, say, I want to do this. And when you get to that goal, then you know, if you don't make it specific, you never know if you win. So make it specific, something you can measurable, realistic, specific. And then the last part is put a target date. Put a date on, say, bye. By July, I want to be able to walk a quarter of a mile without stopping, or I want to be able to run a quarter of a mile without stopping. And then it comes along and says, okay, I can just about make it. I Give me another couple of weeks. In June, you say, I got a couple more weeks. Sure enough, you'll make it. You can set your target date. If you don't set a target date, it just kind of fades off and you just kind of, Oh, I'll get there someday. Well, target days are very important. So use, apply all your, your if, if you can apply those principles to your goals for 2023. MERST, measurable, realistic, specific, and put a target date on. So I've used a MERST principle for years myself. I've, uh, I picked up on MERS from a business I had years ago called Montana Dream Builders, which was a, a company I started off of a franchise out of Waco, Texas called uh, I'm thinking of the name of it now. My mind just slipped my mind. That's that's one of my challenges with brain injuries I have. A, I get a thought going and then all of a sudden it just disappears. Because you have an audience. Pardon? Because you have an audience. <laughs> yeah, I got people listening. Hey, everybody listening out there, anybody, has anybody got any specific goals that they want to see the Brain Injury Alliance do this year? If you have some things that you want to see that 
the brain injury provide for you as, as citizens in Montana or wherever, if you see something that they can do, by golly, write it down. Write John or Sarah or Ty a note here and say, I want to do this this year. That's part of the reason why they've got the brain injury conference going is because they had a lot of people say, hey, what happened to our conference? We won the conference again. So that's a motivating factor sometimes of people out there. And if you don't, if you don't get results, get involved. That's the key. John is in the Brain Injury Alliance is always considering new board members. If you think you have leadership skills or you want to get involved helping with the Brain Injury Alliance, call up and get involved. Go visit a few, come to a couple board meetings, find out what they do. And by all means, call the office here. Bug John and Sarah and Ty and just say, hey, I want to know what's, what I can do to help out. They, maybe they need some volunteer help. Come in here and you can sweep, sweep the floor or something. I don't know. <laughs> they'll, they'll find something for you to do. Just come on in here. If you want, a, if you want to read about brain injury, come in here. They got a library with, they got books here. I got a box of books at home that I was supposed to bring tonight and get them so they have more books to give away. There's always something going on. Just challenge yourself to take and do a little bit each day. One of my notes here, and if I go back to getting my notes from for tonight. I talked to you a little bit about attitude. And along with attitude for, for goals for 2023 is gratitude. Gratitude is one of those topics that we just need to stop and take and evaluate your situation. What are you grateful for this year? What are some of those things? And be, be honest and be grateful. Tell yeah, tell John or tell somebody here at the Brain New Drill. Tell call Ty and say, hey, thank you for being there. Just a little bit of gratitude goes a long way sometimes. You know, I, I one of my boys is a took over managing a motorcycle race team and he says, I don't know, how do you how do, how do you motivate people to go, do a good job? I said, well, I wrote back to him. I said, well, one of the best and the cheapest things there is, is a thank you. If you can learn how to focus on what they're doing and, and compliment them on a good job, well done, and just say thank you. That's, that does more than, many times that does more than any kind of pay raise, because that's what he started to say. Well, they all want more money, more money. Well. It is not about all my money. It's about doing a good job. Along with gratitude is selflessness. It go beyond yourself and just say, don't worry about me, I'm, I'm gonna do. I got another list of here, the five easy steps to make 2023 your best year ever. Number one is imagine the possibilities. That goes back to what I talked before a little bit about the, the master dream list. Imagine, just imagine the possibilities. Number two, it's, it's get past the past. So don't let last year failures hold you back. If you, if you didn't make it last year, don't worry about it. Set another goal to make, make, make it better this year. Look inside of yourself. Decide what the key motivators. What makes you tick? What what motivates you? Does money motivate you? Does love? Is what is it? I don't know. That that I hit hit a tender spot there for me. I think we all can use a little more love. If we got love, that solves a whole lot of trouble. 
if you just, uh, my wife listens to podcasts, this guy just goes on, and I'll bet you five times a minute, he says, oh, don't forget I love you. Don't forget I love you. So let love be a, a major, major motivating factor for you. And then once you get this plan, then the whole key to the plan, once you get a plan for a goal for this year, is to implement it. Take the first step. Get out, get out of bed and take the first step. You know, there's a they say there's two types of people in this world. Those that they wake up in the morning after after having a party at night and they say, Good God, is it morning? And those that, those that wake up and they say, good morning, Lord. So just get your attitude right up and say, good morning, Lord. I just, I just love that. I, that's my biggest motivating factor is that when if I can roll over and say, hey, I can smile, I can see. I start appreciating, be grateful for the thousands of things you have today. I'm literally thousands of things. I'm so grateful that, that there's lights in this room here tonight. Can you imagine talking to me, talking to you here in the dark? If we shut the lights off, you never have a hard time see me. John won't have to get a night vision camera. <clears throat> but gratitude, just. Just be thankful that every morning get up and just say, hey, not very good out. The weather's cloudy, but I'm happy. It's snowing out. Oh, it's snowing out. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, but boy, it's going to help the fires next summer. We're going to have less fires. So, just look at everything with a little bit of gratitude and try to try to look beyond the the negative side of things and look at the positive side. Every they say every situation we run into has a positive side. Some of them are pretty tough to see the positive side. But there is. And we just gotta start writing down and make a list. I'm a nut about lists. I like to make lists and, and I have a to-do to -do list. I write down to-do to -do list and, and so it gives me great pride. Hey, I got that. My wife and I this time of year, we put jigsaw puzzles together. We do a, we do a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle in about two days. Wow. We have both, a, of you? both of us working that yeah. together. We have a system down. We we bought a, a board that we can move around and we bought uh, there's a white trays that have six or eight of these white trays that we go through and first thing we do is sort them all out of, in the color categories, the browns and the blues and the yellows and have all the color categories, or one maybe one's got a bunch of signs, so all the printing goes over in this. And, and then she, we have a system. I'm sorting pieces and she puts a border. She starts with the border, gets the border all together. I gotta say, I don't know if I can trust a person that can do a thousand piece puzzle in two days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we uh, one of my my youngest boy is in California. He he sent us a. I remember it. It's either ten. I think a ten thousand piece puzzle. It's a three by four foot puzzle. It's a ten thousand pieces. He says this will keep you going. <laughs> so I don't know if we we'll, we'll manage it one or not. It's been sitting in the box there so far. So <laughs> it'll take it'll take ten days, five days. <laughs> But, you know, she opened up a, a box today from FedEx, dropped off in those boxes. I forgot over there. there are two more thousand piece puzzles. We've got probably 25 or 30,000 piece puzzles. So we go through and 
Doomen, we might not hit that puzzle again for three or four years, but they get out and we do every year. This is our our Christmas thing. We set up the table in the living room and we do 10,000 piece puzzles. And they used to take us about a week. Now we can get them done in two or three days. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But, you know, this year has been fun because the grandkids would come over and we'd have, they'd be helping grandma make cookies in the kitchen and they'd go in and work on the puzzle for a while. So we'd do puzzles. Well, it looks to me like we're getting closer to the bewitching hour. Is there anybody out here tonight that's got questions that we can ask? One of the one of the important things about Montana Public Club is you is we're here to answer your questions. If you don't answer them on mine, you can write a question or call up John or Sarah or Ty here during the day and say, hey, I want you to address this in the next Montana Puzzle Club. We need topics. We need to know what you want so that we can, I can do the research and find it. And I'm I'm a nut about that. I like going and doing the research. If I don't have the answer in the book, maybe I got it online that I can get it. I usually start with online because online's almost unlimited with the amount of stuff that's available. Well, between Zoom and Facebook, we had an incredible crowd, which I'm thankful for. But apparently, the majority of them, their New Year's resolution was to listen. <laughs> Ah, ah. Yes, they're quiet. That that's one of the best New Year's resolutions there is. That's why God gave me one mouth and two ears, so I can listen twice as much as I talk. But listen to me tonight. That unfortunately, when I'm sitting here, the solo person on the camera, I can't listen very much. I got to talk a little bit. <laughs> we like hearing you though. Well, I. I like it. I've enjoyed it. It's gave me, like I said early on, it's given me a good chance to practice my speech therapy. My wife is critical of me sometimes, say, I can't understand you. Well, I say, I'm being understood. So if you don't understand me, <laughs> like I've said earlier tonight, let John know, or let Sarah or Ty know where, give a, give a shout and say, he needs to speak clear. And that's one of the things that gives me good practice in enunciation. I think so. people say you do a pretty good job. They're thankful mm -hmm. for that. We are uh, wrapping things up whenever you're ready. Okay, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna shut down Montana Puzzle Club Online tonight. And as always, if you've got a question, call in. If you if we didn't answer your question tonight, call in and ask Ty or Sarah or John the question. If they don't have the answer, okay, then maybe they'll say, hey, we'll address that in the next Pub Club session. We want to answer your question. That's that's the whole goal with, with support in Montana is supporting each other with helping each other get along. If we can do that and if we can have fun and, and if you've got any questions, just remember those phone numbers. If you're out around long distance Montana, it's 1-800-241-6442. If you're in Missoula or, or have a, a smartphone that calls, it, it's, it's a 541 406-541-6442. Now, of course, you being brain injury survivors, remember those numbers instantly. That's one of our pet topics we talk about two or three times a year is memory. So until then, have a wonderful evening and we'll see you in two weeks. I think that puts us about the well, 28. 18th. So the 18th of January will be our next session. So we'll see you the 18th. And by all means, bring a friend along. Get somebody to come over and laugh with you.
say, look at that funny guy talking on the TV there, or TV, whatever the screen is, call it a TV. And quickly, we had a few people that asked who Ty was, and Ty is our program coordinator. She's been with us for so a few months, and, um, and uh, I think a lot of people logged off because they kind of were seeing what they've done, but Ty's our program coordinator, so hello, Ty. <laughs> so so Ty is, Ty is with us tonight, and Sarah's busy on another project, so we got Ty and John tonight. Welcome again and have a good evening. Right on. Can I one quick picture there we go. Okay. Boop. <laughs>